ideas do you have to make Ward 14 a more green community? Which, by green, we're talking about environmentally sympathetic. La próxima pregunta es qué ideas ustedes tienen para hacer que el distrito electoral número 14 sea una comunidad más verde. Y por verde estamos hablando de servicios como reciclaje que envuelve a que la comunidad sea más amistosa para nuestro ambiente. The order this round, Mr. Cummins, Ms. Garcia, Mr. Cintron, Mr. Casey. Thank you. Well, I didn't say it before, but I'm actually a member of the Green Party. It's not all about the environment, it's also real world to the economic development and social justice and economic justice for people as well. But based on that, I am a founding member of the Friends of Big Creek, which is a watershed group. I've already received a $1.2 million grant for a trail project in Old Brooklyn. We're also working right now on a trail project for Walworth Run in Train Avenue. So those, those trails, a lot of people wondered why we did that. But it does go to health, and it does go to bringing people in touch with nature. We also have a fairly decent amount of parks in, in recreation areas and schools which I, I mentioned Lincoln West, is open uh, in after hours during the summer. And I think we'll continue to do what we can. I know the Parks and Recs division does not do the best job of maintenance, but frankly, we need, we need people that live close to those parks and those green spaces to take stronger ownership of those areas as well. We also have 200 trees that we're planning on trying to plant on Denison as part of the road project. Ms. Garcia. I will work tireless hours with parks and recreations because I will state again that um, our kids need a safe environment and we do not have any safe parks in Ward 14 and it's sad to say. I think I've spotted two parks that are being used for um, drug sales and the parks are in horrific conditions. Where are our children going to play? I would focus on flowers. Flowers always gives any um, atmosphere, any area, uh, a beautiful setting and I would focus on the small businesses planting flowers in front of the local businesses so that we can beautify our neighborhoods. Thank you. Mr. Sintran. On the economic part, which will create jobs and such as green space, when I look at West 25th and Fulton, the old antique bank, Ameritrust Bank, uh, Ameritrust, that building became a green project. We need to become more efficient and look at how the federal government state dollars and how can we use projects as the windmills, solar panels, recycling, and the source to bring those dollars into our city in order to continue to create jobs. There's issues also with, with all the, the parks and everything. Every major project that we are looking at, let's start first with the economic part. As soon as we bring the economic part, bring those federal dollars that Obama promised that we there's out there, and all those dollars that's out there, and we continue making those projects available, we create the jobs for this family. We are creating those jobs, and we become independent for foreign uh, needs. Mr. Casey. If you mean green as in uh, energy efficient, if you look just slightly northwest of here, we have Eco Village, which was the first all green village that was built within the United States. It's right across from Zone Rec, another great example of green energy efficient um, use of our resources. If you're talking green as in the middle of the neighborhoods, I'm very big into green space and vacant lots. I believe that we need to get more individuals um, ownership of the neighborhoods with the vacant lots and to be able to maintain those community gardens, uh, vegetable gardens, whatever kind, of, what, what, whatever um, the neighborhood or the community would want in these vacant lots. These vacant lots, when they get toward, when, when the houses get torn down, the city needs to do a better job um, in grading them so that it's not as tough for the residents to take ownership of these lots. Um, but I do believe that every vacant lot within the sit within the ward should be maintained. Our next question. There has been talk for years of having an Hispanic village in Ward 14. Since Ward 14 is the most diverse ward in the city, do you think this is a good idea? 
or do you feel it will segregate the ward? Nuestra próxima pregunta. Se ha hablado por años acerca de tener una villa hispana dentro del distrito electoral 14. Debido a que el distrito electoral 14 es el distrito electoral con mayor diversidad, ¿usted piensa que sería una buena idea o piensa que podría causar segregación dentro de nuestro distrito electoral? The order for this question is Mr. Casey, Mr. Cummins, Ms. Garcia, Mr. Sintra. If this Hispanic village um, can bring job growth, pride, economic development, and stable housing to the community, then I'm completely 100% for it. If it doesn't, though, bring any of those four major factors into a community, we're almost spinning our wheels. So as long as it's, it's a good thing for the neighborhood, it's a good thing that the residents want, then I would not have a problem supporting it. Well, the issue of an Hispanic village, or what we're calling La Villa Hispana, has been talked about for over 20 years. I knew about it when I took the office in 2010. I waited and listened to people for two and a half years. Last October, I put together a PowerPoint presentation, and we were invited by Global Cleveland to present it to what they viewed in us as Hispanic stakeholders and business people. Since that time, we've been working very close with the Hispanic Business Center because it has to be based on businesses. And I'm going to give you one interesting example. Tony's Market is owned by an Arab, run by an Indian, and it's, a, it's an Hispanic bodega, Hispanic grocery store. With this project was initially based on new construction. Our version and view of it is based on the existing businesses that we have. I've talked to Father Mike at St. Rocco's. He's Italian. He's okay with it. It's an organizing principle, it's a place-making principle, and it will, I think, attract people to this area for the Hispanic culture that we already have. Ms. Garcia. I think it's a marvel. I think it's a marvel. Testing. I think it is a marvelous opportunity. As they mentioned earlier, Ward 14 consists of 42% of Hispanics. This is a project that has been in the makes for over 22 years. I think it's time that we launch this project. I do not think that this will cause any segregation. I think this will give Ward 14 the opportunity to see and embrace the Latino culture and understand how we work united as one and how we will embrace everyone in this ward because the beauty of Ward 14 is that it's a diversified ward, although 42% Hispanic. I would love to see this project because it's well needed. Not only will it provide jobs, I think it will also enhance the agricultural um, setting of this ward. And as I mentioned, I think it will be the greatest opportunity to not only bring the Latinos together, but bring this diverse ward in one solidified project that will help each and every one of us. Thank you. Mr. Centrum. Hello, this reminds me uh, when I got elected and you were a member of council also, you know, through my veins, I'm a Latino, and through my heart, I'm a Latino. But the organizers of the Hispanic Village got to get the act together. For over 20 years, you cannot depend for the government to fund your project. It takes private development dollars, and the organizers have to do it together. In Chicago, the way they did it was to identify all the businesses and go get it fought real hard for Congress to get the money to create the Vija. Sure, as Latino, we want it to happen, but the organizers had to make it happen. And when I was in city council, they had the opportunity to make that dream come out true, but then they changed, they continued changing locations and asked for more funding for my study. If there's anyone who knows this and could speak about this, it's says the Latino que sabe, ellos tienen que tener su acto correcto para hacerlo. And I think that there's no one in city council that wants to stop it. Okay, our next question, this should be pretty easy. Where did you reside before this campaign started? Where do you actually reside now? Where will you reside should you win this election? Nuestra próxima pregunta va a ser bastante fácil. ¿Dónde usted residió antes de empezar su campaña? 
donde reside ahorita y donde piensa residir una vez sea electo o gane la elección. Our order this round, Mr. Cintron, Mr. Casey, Mr. Cummins, Ms. Garcia. For 40 some years I lived in Ward 14. And when I look at this map, I bet you a lot of you have looked at the map. I look on Vega Avenue, I see the highway, I see my old Ward 14 over there, the residents that I used to represent. It is a shame that members of council play politics to keep me out because they knew I was running for public office. Not only did they done that to me, They did also that to my companion, Brian Casey, who lives on the borderline, just one street away. I assure you, as soon as I get back into city council, it only takes legislation to include us back in into city council, as long as the two members of council uh, has an understanding. What they did was gerrymander us out. They knew I was one of the strongest Latinos, and they cut us in half through the whole district. Not only because I'm a Latino, because I was fair to everybody, that I used to be a member of council. I represent everybody with honor, honor. But if they did this to protect a councilman's job, it's a shame. Look at it, look at your map. I live in War 14, and in my heart I was always going to live in War 14. Mr. Casey. <laughs> Somebody did a very good job of protecting themselves and not looking after the best interests of the residents. Yes, I live 161 feet outside of Ward 14. Literally, three houses and an alley away. We measured it the other day. I thought it was 191, but it's 161. But if you look around the room, and you look across the table, does it really matter to you where that person resides? It shouldn't matter what any resident thinks anybody lives, if you think you're not going to get the best representation because somebody at City Hall drew an imaginary line that somebody's not supposed to cross, these wards are getting too big for any any individual, that's why you should have council at large, part of it, but that's another story. But if you don't think you're not going to get good representation from me over 161 feet in an imaginary line, you're sadly mistaken. Mr. Cummins. Well, I live in uh, in a house that my wife Gail is here, and uh, we live in her grandmother's house. Um, we've been there since we got back to Cleveland in 2001. I, I think the most important thing about this question, though, is really how does one deal with the diversity of the neighborhoods that we serve? I was redistricted the last election and won an election in an in a ward that was 75% new to me. I did that, I think, by convincing and winning people over that I knew and I was competent in my work, I knew how to bring people together, and I knew how to try to, as best as possible, through the empowerment that I talked about, bring people together and represent their areas. When we developed the development office, we took six months meeting with representatives from all the communities that we've represented. We will do that again in, because we're taking in more, all of Stockyards now We will make sure that we have a very robust engagement process with the new areas of the ward. Ms. Garcia. 14 years ago, I moved to Dominican Republic, and when I moved back, I moved to Fairview Park, and I have to say thank you to Nelson Cintron, who recommended Cleveland Housing Network. I purchased a home that was rehabbed and completely gutted, on Muriel Avenue. I am proud to say that that is my first home that I purchased and I continuously live there. I would not sell the home because my kids are constantly saying do not sell it, this is where we were raised. But as I drive down Archwood, my son is constantly telling me, mom, this is the best street that you have here on Ward 14. Why not move to Archwood and not, uh, why not allow us or why not allow me to go to school here in your ward? If I was to be elected, I can't guarantee that I would move because that is my, my pride and joy, and that is my first investment. But if I move from the Dominican Republic to Fairview, from Fairview to Cleveland, when I was going to run 12 years ago, I would probably move back to Ward 14. Thank you very much. Our next question. With the district slash ward now being so spaced out, how can you assure us that, this, that any neighborhood will not be forgotten? The order this time, Ms. Garcia, Mr. Cintron, Mr. Casey, Mr. Cummins. 
Nuestra próxima pregunta, con el distrito electoral ahora ha sido tan esparcido, ¿cómo nos puede asegurar que ninguna de los vecindarios va a ser olvidado dentro del distrito? If I can work as the council person here in Ward 14, I would follow the steps of Jay Westbrook. As I knock on doors, people are constantly saying how this man has been in office for so many years and has attended to every need. I will work diligently to work with each and every individual, and I would like to publicly announce, if elected, I will be hiring Rick Nagin, who has all the experience in the world, was the assistant to Nelson Cintron, and from what I hear, he took care of a lot of the issues in Ward 14 and made sure that the residents of Ward 14 were pleased, satisfied with his services, and their needs were met. Thank you very much. Mr. Cintron. Residents of Ward 14, for years, this new section has been forgotten. I have walked it for four months, have looked at the streets, have taken pictures of the houses that need some repairs, I have looked at uh, many, many issues that you have pointed out. I have taken your numbers personally to understand the needs and wants of this new section. I assure you that when I became the councilman, I took care of the Clark Fulton area, I took care of the Stockyard areas, and we made sure that housing was being developed throughout the, 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 those sections, also the development in Ohio City, and also the projects of the small section on the Tremont. Everybody got taken care of. I made sure that the money was Divided equally throughout the entire ward. There was not no special section in my heart. Everybody was special in my heart, and I made sure that those calls was answered directly. Make sure, because that's number one priority. You want to make sure if you have access to me. And I assure you that when you call my card, it goes right into my cell, while I give you my cell number. That's what you want. You got it right here. As a member, as a former member of council, your next member of council. <coughs> We're in the very far west end of, of Ward 14, and you can practically see my house when you go out and, and on the Clark Avenue. We know that economic development and job growth is going to come from the West 25th Street area. So being in the far west end of the ward, in order to get to the far east end of the ward, I'm going to have to go through the ward. In addition to that, I've said all along that I will be setting up a 25-member councilmatic advisory committee that will have every neighborhood represented. We will have five residents from each neighborhood on that committee that will ensure that not only myself, but the office will stay completely 100% engaged with every aspect of Ward 14. Mr. Cummins. As I stated earlier, when I took office in 2010, we convened two consultants to work with all the neighborhoods, uh, Gail Long, very well respected, Jim Pelican, and for over six months we worked with and spoke with residents all around. So we've done this already. Um, and that's why we, we've been so successful over the last three and a half years. We will continue to do that. I also like to point out that I have excellent working relationships with my colleagues on council and have been working with them over the last three and a half years to make sure that areas don't fall within these border areas and are forgotten. So I work very closely with Matt Zone, who I want to point out is in the room, also with Joe Sipperman, Tony Brancatale, as well as Joe, as well as uh, Donna Brady, who I will be working with more closely because the new ward will abut her area. So we will continue. We already have an advisory council that represents, that's representing and overseeing the Stockyards Clark Fulton Brooklyn Center Development Office. It's been very successful in addition to a housing committee, safety committees, and other committees.